Well, I had a couple of questions about the uh, project. Uh, you're doing the project on the bottom of uh, beta. So, first of all, uh, I think we probably went through the bottom of beta a little bit quickly uh, before the midterm exam. So we're going to do just a couple of review questions for the bottom of beta, just to discuss with our partner. Also, you're doing this at the moment for your project. Okay, so group question number one. So discuss with your partner, then I'll ask you the answer. So which type of company? This is about the, your project that you're doing about the bottom of beta. Very relevant to your project. Which type of company has a product which is more a need, or sorry, more at once than a need, and therefore moves more with economic changes? This is also in the uh, also in the PPT files. But you can look up here. You can find this under bottom of beta. I put two bottom of betas in the PPT files. Right, this is the second one. Just has these extra questions. The only difference is the extra questions. Right. So, uh, do you understand this question? Which product is more? Not something so much that we want, something that we need. Okay? And therefore moves more with economic changes. Do you know Nongshim? Yes. Do you like Nongshim? Yes. What kind of product does Nongshim make? Let the foreign students know. Ketchup. Ketchup? Ketchup. Noodles? Ramen. Do you like Korean ramen? No. No, you're honest. <laughs> Do you like Korean ramen? Yes. yes. Koreans like Korean ramen, right? What do you think ramen is junk? Kind of like junk food a little bit, right? Okay, so discuss. Do you know Gucci? Do you have Gucci handbag? No. Not yet? Okay, so discuss with your partner and then uh, tell me the answer. So, Kim Dagyong, what do you think? <laughs> which company has a product which is more of a want than a need? Gucci or Namshim? Which one is more wanting than needing? Which one is more needing than wanting? <laughs> Which is more wanting for you? And which is more needing? Noodles or a Gucci handbag? Which is need and which is want? Which is need? Which is want? Do you want to say the word? Gucci. So do you agree with her? She says the noodles is more need and the Gucci handbag is more want. One? Yes. yes, so which one is going to move more? Which one is more ri risky? Which stock is more risky? Gucci. Right, the economy changes. People, are people going to stop? Are you going to stop buying noodles because the economy is bad? Or are you going to buy more noodles? If the economy is bad, are you going to buy the same noodles, more noodles, or less noodles? Same, maybe even more noodles, right? Maybe you'll have noodles for breakfast and noodles for lunch, just rice for dinner, right? Very cheap. Don't have any job. 
Do you eat a lot of noodles? Do you like eating noodles in the PC bar? No? I see it when if I go to the PC bank, I can see a lot of young men playing games and eating noodles. Right? So maybe if the economy is bad and people lose their job, the noodle sales might even go up, right? PC bank business might even go up and the noodle sales might go up. Right? So uh, Gucci has got which company is going to have a higher beta? Which company is more risky? Which company is going to have a higher beta? Gucci. Okay, so we did this in our project. You have to check your product type. What is the product type? Then what is the average? You check on the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, what is the average beta for historical beta for all of these uh, products? Right? If I'm in the chocolate industry, it's going to be lower than if I'm in the handbag luxury product industry. Which one can make a bigger profit when the economy is doing well? Good cheap, right? So it can go up or down. So the product type is the first determinant. Okay, so the next question then is, if our company is very risky, how can we make our product more of a needed product? We said that it's okay to be risky if we think there's good opportunity and we can make big profit, then it's okay. But let's say that we want to make our company less risky. Our stockholders and our CEO ask us, we're the financial manager. They say we want to make our company less risky. Okay? So in order to do that, one way we can do that is make our product less of a want and more of a need. So think about some companies that sell products. How can they try to make people think that they need a product? Right? How can they change people's perception? Do you need face cream? 30 years ago, did people think they needed face cream? No. No, so a face cream company changed their, their company, their product, from a wanted product to a needed product. Okay? Face cream. Face cream, 30 years ago, not many people bought face cream. Do you use face cream? Yes. How many times a day? One or two times in the morning and at night? Yes. Yes. Korean men are very good at taking care of their skin and all those things. Right? My wife tries to make me use face cream. She puts in a shelf very easy for me to get, but I never use. I don't have the habit. Korean men are neater, very neat. I'm quite me messy. Irish men are quite messy, right? Why are Korean men so neat? Hmm? Are you neat? Why are you neat? Hmm? Don't know. It's a mystery to me. Do you put your shoes very well in the house? Put away your shoes well? Not really. Most guys do. Using face cream. Tidy your room. Your room is always tidy. Clothes is well organized. Mm. Yes. So it's the advantage of Korean men. <laughs> They're very neat and tidy. Doesn't sound like a very exciting advantage when you're young. Right? But if you get older, maybe like my wife, you'll be annoyed by some messy guy who doesn't put his shoes properly, doesn't take care of his face, doesn't uh, tidy the, organize the clothes properly. Right? Would you be annoyed to live with a man like that? So you're lucky you live in Korea, right? <laughs> Korean men are very organized and tidy. So, you go to another country. Are there any Chinese students? Here. Are there any Chinese students? <laughs> no, then it's safe to say that China is quite messy. <laughs> Maybe they're not going to watch on the video. <laughs> compared to Korea, compared to Korea, right? But I also said that Irish people are very messy. It's okay. Like me. You go to China, they're not as tidy as Korean people. I live in both Korea and uh, China. Okay? So especially I'm surprised that Korean men are very tidy. But that's a good thing, right? That's kind of off the topic. So, 
The question is, you want to make your product a more needed product. How can you do that? Discuss with your partner. So men's face cream. At the moment in Ireland, men's face cream is not a needed product. It's a wanted product. If you're selling men's face cream in Ireland, how could you make that into a needed product? Do you understand the question? Gucci is a wanted product. Rice is a needed product. Okay? In some poorer countries, the internet or telephone is not a needed product, it's just a wanted product. Okay, so how can we change our product from wanted to needed? Okay, anybody? Can anybody answer that question? Yes? Marketing, right? It's a one word answer. Marketing. Spend more money on marketing. Okay? So, for example, I used to live in uh, Ecuador. Ecuador is quite a poor country, so a lot of people don't have cars. Right? Car is, is uh, just needed product in Korea. Right? But in Ecuador, car could be wanted product. Okay? So, in also the type of car. In Ecuador, they can have just quite cheap car, right? So because of marketing, people think they need a very expensive car. So they think they need to spend Ichon or Sam Chon Man Wan on a new Hyundai Avante, right? But actually the main function of a car is to get from point A to point B. So if you saw my car, you can see that after living in Ecuador, I understand that just the car, important thing is the function, to get from point A to point B safely. And Cheaply, right? Don't spend much money on petrol. So I just have a cheap car with small engine. Okay? But because of marketing, people think that they need a big car, a big engine, and a lot of things inside, and they pay a lot more money for the big car. But actually, the main function of the car is just to get from a point A to point B safely, right? You can buy the second hand car for Obeg Man 1, but people buy the new car for E Chunk Man 1, right? which maybe they don't uh, need as much. But why? Because marketing makes them think that they need to have this car. Right? Maybe for the public image or that kind of thing. Uh, the same for other things like face cream. Maybe you could be tricked into thinking you need this face cream. Right? Do you think I'm okay with no face cream? <laughs> what do you think? Yes or no? Yes, it's okay. Let's stop using face creams. <laughs> they save money, right? They're just filling you with their marketing. They're telling you about the science. They told you some science. Show you some picture like the hole in the skin and gets bigger or smaller. And you're watching the marketing. Oh, I better use face cream. Look at the science. They're using science in the advertisement, so it must be true. Right? Oh, uh, anyway, I'm not sure. Maybe you do need face cream, right? It depends. Do you believe the marketing or not? But one way we can make our product appear more needed is by using marketing. 
So, another question. Uh, on one hand, we have an airline which has high fixed costs, like, like oil and airplanes. On the other hand, we have a company like an online bookstore with low fixed costs. Both are about the same size. Which company is riskier and why? Discuss with your partner. you have a high fixed cost that you can't change, right? So again, as we're doing our project, this is relevant to what kind of business is your company in, right? Product type, also does it have high or low fixed costs? So the type of industry, bottom of beta is looking at what industry are you in, okay? Airline industry is going to be more risky than bookstore industry. Why? You have higher costs, okay? Uh, those kind of things. So, let's look at this question. Two firms have an operating income of 10 million and sales of 100 million. Firm A has 100% fixed cost and firm B has 50%. If next year's sales increase by 10 million to 110 million, how much will the operating uh, income increase for each firm? So, a little bit complicated, a little bit like the question we talked about earlier in the class about uh, the general and administrative costs, how much were fixed and variable, okay? So, if they will be A the same, both will have increased 100%, or B, Firm B's cost will have increased 4.5 million, so its operating income will increase to 55%. So operating income, what's an easier way to say operating income? Easy way to say operating income. Huh? Well, revenue is at the top, revenue minus cost equals operating income. What's it, operating income? Revenue minus cost equals what? Begins with P, ends with T. Profit. profit, or earnings, right? So two companies have a profit of 10 million and revenue of 100 million. Firm A has this much fixed cost, firm B this much fixed cost. So 0% variable cost, 50% variable cost. Next year the sales increase by 10 million. How much is the cost going to increase for this company? 100% fixed cost. Revenue increase. How much is this going to increase? Hmm? We already answered this question earlier. If the fixed cost is 150 in one year, 
year one. How much is the fixed cost going to be in year two? The same. The same. Okay, what about the company that has 50% variable cost? If we have 50%, 50%, how much is our, how much is firm B's uh, up, uh, cost B in year two? So try, so think about this and uh, try to calculate the correct answer, okay? same in the first year, but how much is the cost going to be? Here, so uh, Wang Hyung Tae, where is Wang Hyung Tae? Wang Hyung Tae, not here. Uh, Bak Myung Jun, not here. Uh, Kim Ah Rong, yes. What number will be here? For company A in year two, what is my cost going to be? We have 100% fixed cost. Is my cost going to change or not change? What does fixed mean? So what's my cost going to be in the next year? 90. And what's my profit going to be? 20. Okay, company B. I have 50% variable cost. What's my cost going to be here in year two? If it was 100% variable cost, what number would be here? 99. 99. So it's 50% variable cost. What's it going to be? 99. Why, hmm? why did you say 99? Because uh, here the cost is 90, right? So it increased by 10%, the revenue increased by 10%. So my variable cost also increased by 10%. If it's 100%, right, it will be 99. Okay, but my variable cost is 50%. So it's not going to increase by 10%, it's going to increase by 5%, okay? So what number will be here? What's 5% of 90? 4.5. 4.5, so we have 94.5. And what will the profit be? 15.5. Okay. So, uh, what's the answer then? A or B? Kim Aron. Which is the correct answer? A or B? B. First B's cost increased by 4.5 million. The revenue increased by 10%. Okay. 100 to 110. The costs also increased by 10%, 90 to 99, but 50% are fixed, so 45 million there's no increase, 
45 million is variable. 45 million has 10% increase. 4.5. Okay? Then we get this total. So we can see that firm A can make more profit. Okay? So like we said, if firm A is an airline with a high fixed cost, it can make more profit because it, its costs are fixed, right? As its sales go up, it can also make more loss. It's more risky. Okay, uh, next uh, group question. You are a Korean uh, and European car company. Or you are comparing a Korean and European car company. There are strong trade unions in Europe and it is harder to lay off workers there. Will their risk be the same or different? Why? Discuss with your partner. We're still talking about fixed and variable cost. Question about fixed and variable cost. Just reviewing. So. Let's say we have BMW and Hyundai, right? BMW and Hyundai. In Korea, the workers work a lot of overtime. They can be fired easily. Okay? Sometimes when the worker is 45, they can just get fired easily. In Europe, it's not possible. Why? Because of trade union. Do you understand trade union? No dong hyop jo? No dong hyop jo? Is that correct? Jo hop not hop jo? <laughs> okay, so they have strong no dumb no dumb job yep, in Europe. Okay, so they can't fire the workers. They have to give them permanent, more permanent contracts. They can't keep them on just short-term contracts, right? Do you understand layoff? How do you say layoff in Korean? There you go. It's hard. So if you have no dumb job is strong like in Europe. It's not easy to fire the worker, right? In Korea, unfortunately, the labor law is still catching up, not strong yet. Korea used to be a developing economy and it moved very quickly to be a developed economy, so the law has to catch up with the economy, right? So as of yet, Korea's labor law is not that strong, but it can improve in the future, we hope. So, will the company's risk be the same or different, and why? Discuss with your partner. Have any work to do? No. no. In Korea, can they fire the workers? Yeah. So which which do you, do you think it's the same or different? Which company has a higher risk? In Europe, why? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? We're talking about variable and fixed cost. They have um, uh, higher fixed cost. So the European company has a higher fixed cost, right? They have to pay their workers whether the economy is going well or not going well. They can't just lay them off. But in Korea, it's easier to lay off the worker, so they are going to slightly lower risk. Okay? Uh, they won't lose as much money. So discuss with... This is one example. 
a power company can make less fixed costs and more variable costs. So this goes with your partner. Your company wants to have less fixed costs and more variable costs. What kind of things can you do? So you want to make your company have less fixed and more variable costs. What are you going to do? For example, you're working for a restaurant or an airline company, a car company, anything. Does anyone have any suggestion? Yes? What did you say? Operate more projects. Operate more projects, but we're, that's diversification. But we're talking about having less fixed cost and more variable cost. Does anyone have any suggestion? How can the company have less fixed cost and more variable cost? Lease. Leases instead of buying. Leasing instead of buying. Leasing cars, leasing buildings instead of buying buildings, right? If we buy an office or a building, that's great, but we have 25 offices. What happens if the economy is going badly? We have to close down. We have five offices we're not using, right? But if we just lease the office, the lease ends at the end of the year, we don't renew the lease, it's okay. So many companies, in Ireland one of the banks, when the economy was going badly, they sold all of their properties and leased them back, because they were closing down the bank branches. So they wanted to have their properties on leases. And these days people are using more online banking than going to the banks. So some banks are shutting down their branches. So the technology changes, people use more online, things change. If you have a lease, then you can adapt more easily, right? We talked about delivery company. If you lease your cars, business goes down, it's okay. Just give the car back to the leasing company, okay? So leasing, also we saw more for workers, just one year contract instead of permanent contract is advantage for the company, not for the worker, but for the company. Okay. Uh, so the next one is about the financial leverage. Uh, we're finding out in our bottom of beta. Important part, we're finding the market value of debt. What is the leverage? What is the debt to equity ratio? So, which will do better for equity investors and worse in a strong economy and worse in a weak economy? So higher risk. Better in a strong economy, worse in a weak economy. A pizza restaurant funded with 90% bank loans and 10% equity. Or a pizza restaurant funded with 10% bank loans and 90% equity. And why? So discuss with your partner. Do you think the answer is A or B? And why? Which one is higher risk? Okay, so hands up who thinks that uh, A is higher risk? A, hands up who thinks B is higher risk? Okay, let's try again. Hands up who thinks A is higher risk? Hands up, who thinks B is a higher risk? Okay, so it's correct. A is a higher risk, right? The more debt, 90% debt, 10% equity. Okay, what's the debt to equity ratio? So debt to equity ratio is, uh, we put the uh, equity o debt over the equity, so it's going to be 900%, right? That's a high debt to equity ratio. 
Then this one uh, is going to be 10 over 90, it's just going to be 11% debt to equity ratio, right? So sorry, this is, uh, yes, yeah, so normal rule of thumb, it should be no more than 67% uh, debt compared to 33% equity, right? No more than 200%. More than 200% that the equity ratio is going to be hard, very hard, right? So uh, you're doing this in your project, you're calculating, finding out the debt to equity ratio for your company. And uh, if the company has more debt, the beta is going to be higher or lower? If the company has more debt, is the beta going to be higher or lower? Higher, right? If the company has zero debt, the beta will be lower, right? Just we'll just look at the industry to figure out the beta. The industries. Uh, be careful that for the industry we have the the uh, non-leveraged uh, beta, okay? And then we add the leverage of the company. So, uh, next question: Which type of company is more likely to have a higher leverage? A utilities company like Estate Telecom or a risky business like a new technology product? And why? <laughs> Leverage usually changes over the life cycle of a company, right? Here we have the life cycle. Company A just starting out here. Company B is here. Already grew a lot and now in the, the stage. Okay. Which one will have more debt? Company at this stage of the life cycle or at this stage? Okay, so hands up who thinks A? A is going to have more leverage, higher debt. Hands up who thinks B? B will have higher debt. Okay, so A is correct. Why did you say A? <laughs> who do you want to lend money to? Yes, A, it's easier to get loans. Right, company B, they're not going to get loans. They'll go to the bank, the bank will say no. I'm not giving you a loan, right? They have to get money from equity investors. Okay, angel investors. Go to some coffee morning in Silicon Valley, introduce themselves. So Mark Zuckerberg met some angel investor, gives him the money, and start the company, right? Then later, they can start to get some loans. Okay, later in the, the, the day. Okay, uh, also the interest rate would be very high on the loan here. Okay? Here the interest rate will be very low on the loan. So then you need to make the weighted average. Uh, some student asked me about the weighted average. We have the weighted average again to review 20%, 20%, and 60%. 1, 2, 3 equals 0.2, equals 0.4, equals 1.8. Add together 2.4 is the weighted average. Okay? That's how we make weighted average. Right? We have some percentage, we have a number, multiply the percent by the number and then add them together. Okay, do you have any other question about your project? Bottom, bottom of beta? No? So this is what you're doing, is finding the bottom of the data for your company, right? We have a more detailed, more detailed list on the thing. So then uh, let's finish there for today.